It's warm, warm again. again. Oh, we're, we're finally, finally, finally getting, getting the warm. warm. It's, it's good. good. It's good, good for it to be back. back. I love it. Well, well, we, we got, got a mixed, mixed reaction now. That's weird. weird. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, so, hey, uh, we're, we're glad, glad that you are here. here. Welcome, Welcome to our, our online crew as well. As well. And, and always in the spirit of getting to know the people around you. This is what church is about. We want to know the people that are with us. Uh, I, want I want you to get to know the people that are singing these songs, hear the message next, next to, you. to you. So, in the, in the theme, theme of weather, weather what's, what's the hottest, hottest where has it been, been the hottest, hottest you've, you've ever been? been? Uh, for, for me, it was, it was in college. college. I, I would, would stay, stay over, over during the summer, summer and work, work try, to try to pay off some of those uh, tuition, tuition fees, fees, and I went to school in Reading. So you stay in Reading in the summer. The hottest thing I was was 120. 120. We were on the lake that day. It was like, we're going to take the day off work, we're going to go to the lake. So, that's, That's what, what we did. did. So, so why, don't why don't you turn around? around? Why, don't why don't you say how hot it's been? And, uh, and, and what you did, did that day. day. We'll, we'll get back, back to worship in just a minute, minute here. here. Mm-hmm. 
continue worshiping this morning. You were worthy the King. One with God, the Lord, most high. In glory in creation. Now we live in our eyes. What a beautiful name. Christ my King. What a 
Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name.
So uh, appreciate all the prayers. Everybody's done them well. A couple of people down with sickness, but everybody seems to be bouncing back. So uh, appreciate all the prayers. I just want to do a prayer for you this morning. So you can pray. God, thanks. Thanks for a congregation that uh, loves people, not only in our neighborhood and in our own community, but around the world. Thank you for those that have given so generously to transform this space. And uh, we pray now that uh, as we depart, that it would uh, continue to be a blessing, that it would change lives, that people would uh, benefit and grow and be able to reach out to digital libraries all over the world, and that this place would become a, a place of community and safety and peace and grace and learning. And so we dedicate this space to you and uh, just pray for each need in our congregation. We know there's some sickness, we know there's some uh, fear, we know there's some things happening, and so we just ask you, God, to be in control. I pray your richest blessing over that congregation, over each person, each home, each family, each story, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. All right, that's, All right, that's cool. cool. It's cool, cool to hear from our team. team. With plus, plus all the construction, construction noises, noises in the background. background. <laughs> uh, if, you if you haven't been keeping up, up, we have uh, our, they've been putting, putting Facebook updates, updates so, so you can go to the Montrose Church, Church page and you can see what's, what's happened, happened with that team, team but, but we'll, we'll be excited, excited to welcome, welcome them back, back uh, pretty, pretty soon. soon. So, so my name is Austin, Austin, one of the one pastors here at Montrose Church. Got a couple quick announcements for you. Always check our Right Now page, that's the way to get connected and see what's happening here at church. There's, There's a few, few things, things I want to highlight, highlight though. though. Arch Camp, Camp registration, registration is filling, is filling up very, very quickly. There are only a few spots left. So if there's, there's somebody in your family, family grades 1 through 12, through 12 that needs to be at Arch Camp, Camp uh, this, this next, next month at the Pasadena, Pasadena Campus, campus please, please sign them up ASAP. ASAP. Uh, coming up next month, also on July 9th, we're going to transform this space here. Welcome the Red Cross back and do a blood drive. So if you are eligible to donate, and that's, and that's something, something that you uh, want to do, do. We, would we would encourage you to sign up. There's a link on our Right Now page as well. Uh, we, we need volunteers, volunteers for our media and hospitality, hospitality team. team. So, so if that's media uh, or hospitality, please, please reach out to me, one of the pastors, or email uh, office at montrosechurch.org. As you may or may not have known, last week we had some technical difficulties, and the screen decided to freak out. Uh, so we got that fixed. Thank, Thank you, John, John Harvey, and uh, getting, getting that, that done. done. And, and so we can celebrate our VBS uh, week a week late, late but, but here is our recap, recap video from VBS. That's, That's a, lot a lot of fun. fun. Thank, Thank you again, again to everybody who helped out and volunteered to make that, that week happen. happen. It's, it's a great, great outreach for our community and also for the families connected here at Montrose Church. Church. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward, receive our tithes and offerings. We'll continue to worship.
God, God we, love we love you. Thank, thank you for the, the gifts, gifts we give you today, throughout the week. week. We trust, we trust you. you in your, your name. name. Amen. Amen.
Hello, Hello Church. Church, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. It's good, good to be in the house of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks for being here. It's good, good to see you all. Online, people, thank, thank you for joining us. us. Overflow, people, people thank you for being, being present, present just, just over there. God. God. This, this is, is our last sermon in our series by a thread. And I hope you've enjoyed this series. We've been going through the different healing stories in the Gospel of Mark. It's been a lot of fun. And I hope it's been helpful. We'll start a new series next week. Pastor Jay will be back and he'll be preaching on an Old Testament text. We'll just hang out for a sec. So, so Pastor Dave will be back, back. we'll be kicking off a new series, series called Closer, and that's, that's going to be great. great. But we, we have, have to finish this series well this morning. Um, so, so our text will be Mark 10, 46 through 52. If you want to get, get your phones ready, get your Bibles ready, and we'll, we'll be jumping in there. there. I'd love, love to begin, begin with this question. If, 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 if Jesus was standing in front of you and he asked you this question, what do you want me to do for you? What would you say? How would you respond? What, what do you want me to do, do for you? you. Maybe, Maybe uh, some, some of us would, would quickly, quickly answer, answer with something fun, fun right? right? I, I want, want the Dodgers, Dodgers to win the World, World Series. Series. Anybody? Anybody? Maybe. 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 Um, or I, I want, want USC, USC to finally win, win the football, football national, national championship, championship right? right? Or, or UCLA. UCLA, UCLA people? Yeah, yeah maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Or, or maybe, maybe you respond with, I want to win the Powerball, or, or finally get in really, really good shape. shape. Or maybe, maybe for you golfers out there, you respond with, I want to shoot in the 70s. 70s. All right, or maybe, maybe the 80s, 80s, if you're, if you're not, not as good. good. Uh, maybe, maybe if Jesus asks you, you know, what do you want me to do for you, you say, I'd love to see my dream band, band at the Rose Bowl this summer. summer. That'd, That'd be pretty, pretty fun, fun huh? pretty sweet. Now, now most of us probably wouldn't answer with something, something fun like that. that. We'd, We'd probably, probably answer with something, something serious. serious. Something, something that's been, been on our heart for a, a, a long time. time. Maybe, Maybe something, something like, Jesus, I finally want to be connected to you. I'm so, so tired, tired of just going through the emotions, and I, I want to feel the connection to my Savior. Savior. Or, or maybe, maybe you respond with, with I want to kick, kick my addiction. I'm just, I'm just so, so tired of going, going back, back to the brokenness. Or maybe I want my family member to kick their addiction. Or maybe, maybe you respond with, with uh, I want, want my kids, kids to come to know Jesus. I feel like, like they're missing, missing out on the Savior and so much. And so that's all I want, Jesus. Or maybe, maybe we, uh, I want the sickness in my friend or my family member or in my body to be destroyed, to leave. Maybe, maybe some of you immediately would answer, God, I just don't want to be alone anymore. I'm so, so tired of feeling so lonely. If Jesus asked you, what do you want me to do for you, how would you respond? What would you say? In, in our text for today, Jesus asked a man this question, and then his response is so simple but so beautiful. And let's jump right into it. Mark 10, 46 through 52. It's going to be on screens for you. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by, by the, the roadside, roadside begging. begging. When, when he heard, heard that it was Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they turned to the blind man and said, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Such a cool story in Mark 10 story of a blind man who's on the roadside begging. He encounters Jesus and everything changes. Now, before we kind of get into the meat of this sermon, I'm going to have four different movements with the text. 
Before we jump into that, I'd love to just give us a quick little bit of context here that'll help us. Uh, Mark and the other gospel writers, as they're writing the accounts of Jesus, would be steeped in the knowledge and understanding of the Old Testament. They know the Old Testament very, very well. That's why there's constant references back to the Old Testament. And so when Mark is writing this story, this blind Bartimaeus narrative, he would be thinking of a certain text in the Old Testament, and it's this text, Isaiah 35, 3 through 5. It's going to be on the screens here for you. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come, he will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Verse 5, then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. This is a prophetic text from Isaiah. When your God comes, when the Messiah comes, the eyes of the blind will be opened. Now, church, what you need to know is this is unheard of. This is unheard of. The Old Testament prophets performed all kinds of different miracles, all kinds of different signs and wonders. God's power flowed through them, and they did different things. But the one thing they never did was open the eyes of a blind man because that was reserved for the Messiah. And so Jesus, as he heals different blind men, happens a few different times. And our story for today is the bookend miracle of the healing of a, of, of a blind man. But when Jesus performs these miracles, it's saying something about who he is. He's more than just a prophet. He is a prophet, but he's more than that. He's the Messiah. He's the Lord. He's the King of kings. And so as Mark writes this story down, and his mind is blown about what Jesus is doing and, and healing this man. He's thinking of that text. The Messiah will open the eyes of the blind men. Now, knowing that, let's jump to our, our four movements here. The call, the question, the response, and the way. The call, the question, the response, and the way. You got it? All right, for the three of you taking notes, go ahead. All right. Um, number one, the call. Verse 40, 60, 49. I'm going to read this again for us. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with the large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to Passover, the, the, the massive festival. And he's not alone. He's with his disciples, and, and there's a large crowd, Mark says. And so what we know is that the Jewish pilgrims, not just Jesus and his disciples, but the others, were making their way to Passover as well. So there's a lot of people around. And then Mark introduces a man on the roadside begging, a blind man. And he, and, he, and he says his name, which is interesting because a lot of the different people that Jesus heals throughout these gospels aren't necessarily named. Some of them are. But Mark names Bartimaeus, which is interesting. And he even gives us a little help. He says, oh, he's the son of Timaeus. Bar means son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is on the side of the road. And it, it's good writing from Mark because Bartimaeus being on the side of the road says something. He's not on his way to the festival Passover. He's, he's an outcast. The culture has chewed him up and spit him out and run him over. And so he's off to the side begging, hoping for, for something to change. And he hears that Jesus is close. And Jesus is famous by now. He's performed all kinds of different miracles, his teachings. And so even the blind man Bartimaeus has heard of Jesus. And so he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, what's interesting here is that Bartimaeus calls him by name, but he also gives him a title. He says, son of David, which is a statement of faith from Bartimaeus. He's saying, I know you are the Lord, which is a political statement and a statement of faith. You're the son of David because every good Jewish person would know that the Messiah would come from the, from the line of David, right? It would be David's great, 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 a lot of greats, grandsons, right? Uh, there's even more there. So Bartimaeus, knowing this and having faith, says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples and, and, and others there rebuke him. They tell him to quiet down. 
Shut your mouth. Get out of the way. Jesus doesn't have time for you. Don't you know how many Instagram followers he has? He doesn't have time for you, Bartimaeus. Now, I want to pause here for a moment. I hope we're never like the people who are rebuking Bartimaeus in this story. I hope we're okay with a little bit of craziness and and brokenness and, and even loudness in the body of Christ. This is a hospital for sinners and broken people. That's what this is, church. Amen? That's what this is. And shame on us if we don't have time for people like Bartimaeus in our lives, as the body of Christ, but also even in our families and individual lives. We have to be okay with a little bit of chaos. And Jesus is. He says, call him. Bring him to me. Jesus does what he so often does. He lifts up those who are on the margins and those who are outcasts. And they bring him to Jesus. Verse 49, so they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Verse 50, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Another important thing here, Bartimaeus throws his cloak. In ancient times, everybody had a cloak. Everyone, whether you, you carried it with you or whether you wore it when it was cold and rainy, everyone had a cloak. But a blind beggar, a cloak was is all he would have. That would be his sole possession. He would sleep on it. He would wrap it around him when he's cold. And he would place it in front of him when the people were around so they could throw their money into this cloak. And so Mark says that that Bartimaeus, he jumps up and throws his cloak aside. It's saying something. He's leaving everything to go to Jesus. It's beautiful. All he has to meet this Messiah. And we can compare that to uh, the rich young ruler story. Remember that story? It occurs just, just, just before this one in the early parts of Mark 10. A rich young ruler approaches Jesus and, and asks him a big question. He says, how do I obtain eternal life? And Jesus says, well, well do you know the commandments? Keep the commandments. And he li- lists the commandments. And, and then The rich young ruler says, yes, I've kept all the commandments. I'm a great rule follower. And Jesus does what he does, and he goes right to the man's heart and says, one thing you lack, sell all you have and come and follow me. And the text tells us that the man left away sad because he had great wealth. He couldn't let it go. He, He couldn't follow Jesus. And we feel the contrast here between this story of Bartimaeus giving up everything, even though he just had a cloak, with the rich young ruler who who couldn't do it. That's why God says you can't serve both money and God. It's so hard. So Bartimaeus throws his cloak aside, jumps up and goes to Jesus, and then Jesus asks him a big question. Number two, the question. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, this isn't the first time that Jesus has asked this question to people. Actually, right before our text for this morning, he asked James and John, his disciples, this same very question. And they respond differently. They say, Jesus, when you enter into your glory, we would love to sit at your right and left. (sighs) And Jesus says, you have no idea what you're asking. No idea what you're asking. Jesus asked them such a big question, and, and they choose power. Let us be your vice president and secretary of state when you, when you take over, right? They miss it. They should know by now that the kingdom of God is not about power. They travel with Jesus for three years. Heard his teaching and his different miracles, and it's all been about the kingdom of God, and they've missed it. They still think it's about power. It's not. It's about service and humility. It's about the last being first and the first being last. Not about power. Remember Jesus' third temptation, Matthew 4, Satan and Jesus are battling out in the wilderness, and and Jesus is just kicking off his his ushering of the kingdom of God. And so he's battling it out with Satan on an empty stomach, by the way, which is impressive. Um, And the third temptation, Satan takes Jesus to a high mountaintop, and 
They're there, and the the text says that they're looking over the kingdoms of the earth in all their splendor. And Jesus says, you can have all, I mean, excuse me, Satan says to Jesus, you can have all this if you just bow down to me. And Jesus says, no. No, scripture tells us, worship the Lord your God alone. And right away, church, we can't miss this, is, is Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God that I'm bringing about is not about power. Will I have power? Yes, Jesus will have power, but that's not what the kingdom of God is about. It's about a mustard seed. It's about service. It's about humility. It's about healing blind beggars on the side of the road who are hanging on by just a thread. That's what this is about. And his disciples don't get it. But Bartimaeus answers differently. So back to our question. What do you want me to do for you? How would you respond, church? How would you respond? Maybe some of us would respond with selfish or misguided things. And that's okay. There's grace for that. Jesus has grace for the disciples, even though they constantly mess up, right? And he has grace for us when we mess up and get the wrong answers. But the invitation is to answer with faith and simplicity, just like Bartimaeus does. Number three, the response. Bartimaeus says to the question, Rabbi, I want to see. I just want to see. And the Greek here is interesting because Rabbi actually isn't the best translation there. It's actually Rabboni. And Rabboni is, is a step up from Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher, but Rabboni means master and Lord. So again, we see the faith of this blind man. He says, Rabboni, I want to see. I want to see incredible faith. And and Bartimaeus knows he needs a savior. He needs his eyes healed, but he needs more than that. He's come to the end of himself. He recognizes this is it. I need Jesus to intervene. It's a moment of surrender as he says to Jesus, I want to see. And again, so different than the disciples answer. I want to see. I got ordained a week from this past Friday, which was pretty cool. And don't know. And it was, it was a cool, cool service. service. It, it was, was over, over at uh, Pazaz, Pazaz, which, which is not, not too, too far, far from, from here. here. And um, church, honestly, I, I was just blown away, just kind of emotional the whole weekend about just the faithfulness of God throughout my journey. And I think I've preached a little bit about my story before, but when I was a, at the end of my junior year of high school, I had this kind of encounter with, with God, and the Spirit really convicted me about how I, have, how I had lived in high school and kind of was just praying that night. And, like, names of, or, or excuse me, faces of people in my classes were kind of, like, flashing in my head. And I felt the Spirit kind of say, Colt, you're, you're really missing it, man. Like, I've given you some different gifts, a little bit of a sports platform, and you just haven't used any of it for me. And it was this life-changing moment for me, church. And kind of my call to ministry came out of that. And that's why I love hanging out with these young people and telling them that they don't have to wait to follow Jesus. Now's the time. But just to think about that, and then years later, right, the faithfulness of God throughout my journey. It's been so cool to see and let me just say, this is, this is not in my notes, but this is for free, okay? Um, <laughs> let me just say, Shaylee and I, and now our new little baby, are so thankful for all of you guys. The way you've loved us these last five years. So it's just an honor to serve here, with the high school kids, with the young adults, and, and preach to y'all. So thank you for loving us so well. So this ordination thing, and I, I, I just kept praying. I was thinking about this sermon during all this, and I kept praying throughout the ordination, throughout the service, God, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see the ways in which you're moving at Montrose Church, bringing people in, transforming lives for the gospel, in young people, in all of us. I want to see. God, help me see. Help me see. Just kept praying that. And church, maybe today you want to pray something similar. 
God, I want to see. I want to see in which the ways you can use me in my family, in my occupation, in my day-to-day, just going to Trader Joe's or wherever we go. I want to see. Because I hope that we're convinced that God is still moving and working. Because he is, church, amen? He is. And he wants to use people. He wants to use you and me. And so can we pray today, God, I want to see. Empower me. Help me see clearly. Because Jesus, just like Bartimaeus, he wants to heal our vision too. He does. Can the different things that distract us fall away? And can we just pray, God, I want to see. And then go. Number four, the way. Verse 52, go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Question, when did you first encounter God? First encounter his spirit. Maybe it was a long time ago. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was at a church service just like this. Somebody was preaching, and they laid out the gospel and talked about the grace that is freely bestowed upon all of us. And just something struck a chord with you. You had this encounter. Maybe it was in a simple conversation when a friend was talking about their faith, and and, and you decided, man, I, I want that. I want purpose and peace. I want Jesus. Maybe it was you were out in nature in God's creation going for a, a, a walk or a hike or, or something like that. And, and the creation was just screaming at you God's glory. And you're like, I think there's something bigger than me. This encounter with God. Maybe it was somewhere else or, or something else. But I'm praying you have encountered God. And when we encounter God, things change. When Bartimaeus encounters Jesus on the road, things change for him. And that's what always happens when we encounter the living God and his holiness. I think of Moses, right, when he's in the wilderness and he's, he's not going to, Israel, uh, to Egypt and, and freeing the slaves yet. But he has this encounter with God in the burning bush, right? The text says that the bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. And, and he meets God, and he's blown away by the holiness of God, and he takes off his sandals. And then out of that, the call happens. He goes, right, after a few excuses. Right? <laughs> or I think of Isaiah 6 when Isaiah is given this vision of the throne room. And, and God's robe is filling up the space, and there's angels and heavenly creatures shouting, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And Isaiah falls to his knees because he's blown away at the holiness of God. The kavod of God is the Hebrew word for holiness, kavod. It also can be like described as a heavy weight, feels the holiness of God. He falls to his knees and says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. This encounter, it it changes him. And encountering God changes us, church. It does. But, But here's what I really want us to grasp this morning, is the encounter with God isn't the end, but the beginning. Bartimaeus encounters Jesus. And he gives him new life, new vision, but it's just the star of something amazing. With new vision, he follows Jesus. It's the same for us. Christ restores our sight, our vision in which we see the world. All of a sudden, we think different things are important. And some things that we thought were really important hopefully fall away because Christ is on the throne of our life. It's a life-changing journey that begins It's not enough to have just spiritual high moments, spiritual encounters. Those things are important, but they're not everything. The invitation is to join Jesus in your everyday life and follow him on the road. Belief isn't enough. James says even the demons believe. Even the demons have great theology, right? It's about following Christ. And belief plays a role, absolutely, but it's about following Christ. Jesus, joining with him on the road. And that's what Bartimaeus did. Jesus is our king. He is our guide. The end of verse 52. 
Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the road. The word road in the Greek here is hodos. Can you say that with me, church? Hodos. And it means road, but it also can be translated way. So Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the way. Some of your versions might say that. The term Christianity was, was not around for a long time after this. Even after the Gospels were collected, Christianity, that term Christians, is still a ways away. Before they called people Christians, they called them followers of the way. Followers, followers of, of the, the way, way of Jesus. Jesus. Which, which is, is beautiful. beautiful. And, and, and Mark, Mark is, is doing, doing some amazing writing, writing here. here. Because Bartimaeus follows Jesus along the road, along the way. Like he literally follows Jesus like behind him as he goes to Jerusalem. But he also gives over his life to Christ and follows him. And this church is the invitation for all of us. Not just to follow Jesus in our heads. That's part of it. But, but can we get on the road? Can we get on the way? Can we get out there and, and, and join Jesus as he redeems the world? Because he's calling every single one of us. Amen? He is. He is. And so I'm praying today that, that for someone in here, this would be the beginning of a beautiful journey in Jesus, with Jesus. And, and, and when we're walking with Jesus, hear me clearly, church, and, and young people, especially y'all, right? When we're walking with Jesus, it's the best life. It really is. So can we join with him on the road? I'm praying that this would be a wake-up call for us, a good reminder that Jesus is reaching out his hand, reaching out his hand, and he's inviting us to join him as we go. I want to invite the band back up. Church, thanks for being here. Everybody good? Take a deep breath. We're almost done. Yeah. In conclusion here, I just want to recap our series a little bit. By a thread. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been so fun to dig into these texts. Pastor Dave's done a great job with these different Mark texts. And the whole idea behind this series, By a Thread, was the reality that, that a lot of us are struggling. And if we're not struggling, sometime we will, you know. And we are kind of sometimes hanging on by just a thread. But all you need just like the story of the, of the woman who has the bleeding problem and she slips in the crowd and she, she touches just a thread of Jesus' robe and it heals her. All you need is just a little bit of Jesus and he can transform your life. Just a thread. It's enough. Just a little bit of an encounter with God, the living God, who will flip your life upside down but in all the best ways. Amen? Amen. And the invitation, church, for all of us is to follow Jesus on the road. He's standing in front of us, asking us, what do you want me to do for you? Can we answer with simplicity and faith and say, God, I want to see. Let me see and help me go with you on the road. Let's stand, church, and I'll, I'll pray for us, and then we'll respond in worship. Gracious God, thank you for this morning. Thanks for what you're doing here at Montrose Church in and through this community, God. We don't want to take it for granted. So can we lean in? Can we hear the invitation from you today to follow you on the road, be followers of the way in our everyday lives, God, with our families, with our friends, in our occupations, wherever you would take us, can we follow you? Can we love like you? Can we forgive like you? Can we speak like you? Can we be your hands and feet in a broken and, and needy world, God? God, some of us are just hanging on by a thread, and I just pray that you would meet those people right where they are. Help them know that you haven't forgotten about them. You're our Emmanuel. You sit with us in the brokenness and the pain. You weep with us. And in some beautiful, mysterious way, you can give us peace in the midst of chaos and the storm. So would you do that for some people today, God? Would you show up? God, empower us to be your people. 
as we leave this pray, place. We love you, King Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen and amen. Sing this with me. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. For the one who gave me life, nothing is a sacrifice. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday. Amen.